Today for the call of worship, I'll be reading uh, Psalm 138, verses 1 through 3. That is Psalm 138, verses 1 through 3. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the heavenly beings. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give you thanks to your name for your love and truth. You have exalted your name and your promise above everything else. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased strength within me. Let us pray. Lord, Father Almighty, thank you for all the marvelous things you've done for us in our lives. We pray, we pray to you knowing that you are in all things. We call upon you, O Lord, to engulf us with the Holy Spirit as we worship you today. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Blessings flow. Good morning, Westminster. Good morning. It's a blessing to see you all here on this Lord's Day to worship in the house of God on this first Sunday of the month of June. Our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome our online family for joining in today with us in worship. Thank you for your presence and tuning in today in our time of worship. Our God is a great God, and as I look around and see all your beautiful faces, it's a reflection of the greatness of God. Amen? Amen. Thank you, choir, for leading us in these wonderful songs of worship and praise. I'm going to live, I'm going to live so God can use me. Amen. That's a declaration I pray that we all have and live with that same fervor that we live so that God can use us, and then we're reminded only what we do for Christ will last. Thank you for that wonderful solo. Uh, Sister Smith, thank you so much. Uh, Sister Smith, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> 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 Smith. Let me slow down. <laughs> Sister Lewis. I'm glad Courtney wasn't here. We don't see no lines. <laughs> so but thank you, Sister Lewis. Blessings for that, that wonderful solo. I am so grateful uh, to be here and to be able to worship with you today. <laughs> Uh, our time we'll share in God's word from Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. In fact, we'll be in this passage of scripture for the next few Sundays as we look in God's word. As we've uh, been walking with Christ, and we uh, spent some time uh, in scripture on, uh, on Ascension Day, uh, looking to what the Ascension means for us and our faith in Jesus Christ how Christ uh, being ascended to heaven uh, provided for us all that we need. We uh, le learned what that really meant on last Sunday. We focused on the Pentecost, uh, the power uh, that we received uh, through the fire of Pentecost, that as believers in Jesus Christ, God empowers us to go out and share the gospel uh, with, other belief with other people so they can come into the faith believers, and that was emphasized even in our Sunday school this morning. Amen. If you're on Sunday school, that the emphasis about being disciples and, and sharing the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. Today I want to focus on making disciples as we look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And the Word of God reads, in fact, I'm going to go back to verse 18. I said 19, but I'm actually read verse 18. Verse 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Making disciples. Making disciples. It's been said by one writer by the name of Jess Moody that churches are filled with undiscipled disciples. Jess Moody says the church is filled with undiscipled disciples. He, he's, the author is calling to this, bringing this question fact that there are people who come into faith in Jesus Christ but they have not been discipled, brought to a place of maturity in their faith, meaning that they are not producing other disciples. They're not sharing their faith in Christ with others so that they will grow in the same walk with God. When I read that statement, I wanted to share it, one, to get us to think. Have I been a undiscipled disciple? Am I an undiscipled disciple? Another question I, I thought about was, am I in the disciple-making business? Now, Unfortunately, the term discipleship has been relegated to these super Christians. It's only for pastors and uh, elders. 
teachers, those who bear leadership positions. But that's not what the scripture says. This, this command from Christ is for all. We see the word all emphasized over and over again. All. That means everybody. Everybody. All. It's all inclusive. That we are to all be disciple makers. What does that mean, preacher? It takes on different views based on who you are. Because God called you to come into faith in the fullness of your personality, in the fullness of your unique design, with all your gifts and talents and your abilities, your experiences, so you making a disciple will be different from me making a disciple. But the end goal is that we together strengthen and build the body of Christ. You may have a specific call on your life that sets you apart distinct from someone else. For example, uh, now I'm going to call your name my sister Lewis. <laughs> she could teach someone to sing because she's been trained and she knows how to, to sing. Myself, <laughs> I make a joyful noise to the Lord. <laughs> So I, my discipleship and singing would not help bring, how can I say, the same beauty that Sister Lewis would bring to the table, that I would bring to the table. Now, I'll give you a joyful noise, but it won't be this beautiful angelic voice that's been trained how to do it. So her process of discipling someone as a gospel singer would not be the same as my process. And it will not yield the same fruit. <laughs> okay? So, so that is to say that every one of you that God has called, when he called you, you're a disciple, maker. Based on what you have, what you bring to the table, where you are in your unique place in time right now. There are things that you bring that no one else can bring. The things that you can do that no one else can do. There are experiences that you have that no one else has that you can share with a younger believer to help them grow in the faith. So disciple making is all of our jobs. Okay? I want to put that out there first because I want us to understand that in order for the church to grow, you are a key part in church growth. A key part in believer growth. A key part in people in your family, people in this church, growing up and becoming more mature in the faith. You're a part of that. And without you, it cannot be done effectively. So as Jesus is sharing with the believers here, these disciples, we see it's a glimpse of what was shared before he ascended to heaven. We see these, these words that he was there in verse 16, there on the mountain, and Jesus is giving them directions. They're worshiping him, the Bible says. Some, some of them still had some doubt in their heart. They still were dealing with their own fleshly uh, tug of war of what they've just experienced. Jesus died. He's been resurrected. Now he's before them. And they have this, it says doubt, this ambivalence, like where are we going to, what, what's going to happen next? They have these questions running through their mind. That's normal. That's human nature. But Jesus goes on and he doesn't address their doubt, but he gives them a clear declaration. He says it. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. This declaration that Christ makes, filled with this word, all, all authority, all authority, all power, all which is necessary to deal with your doubts, 
to deal with your questions. All I have and all that I have is going to be at your disposal, available to you to fulfill this great commission, this great mission that I have for the church. All power, all authority, which we talked about last week, the fire of Pentecost, the allness of God, the, the, the power, the presence of God becoming resident and present in our lives, the Holy Spirit leading us, guiding us, and empowering us so that we are able to do and fulfill this command that Christ gives us to make disciples. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I'm focusing today on this part where it says, make disciples of all nations. For well, the next few Sundays out there with go and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and, Lord, and then teaching. I'm going to deal with those on other Sundays. But today I want to focus on this idea because this is the, the main driving verb of this passage. The imperative is to make disciples. How do you do it? You go, and when you do it, when you're, when you're doing it, you're baptizing and you're teaching them. But the main thrust is to make disciples of all nations. So Jesus gives a declaration that I'm giving, I have all authority, I'm, I'm letting you know that when I call you to do something, you are back with all authority, all power, you're filled with all power. So go forth and make disciples, disciples, followers of Christ, pupils, pupils learners of him. Those who have committed their life to the process of fully surrendering their heart, their mind to the study of Christ, to the obedience of Christ, and the imitation of Christ, the study of Christ, the obedience to Christ, and the imitation of Christ. And that, that's what Christ wants us to be, people who study Him, study His Word, study his ways, his people. Be in the communion of fellowship of saints and believers so that we study what it means to be a Christian, a Christ follower. And then to fully engage in obeying, to do what the word says do, to live according to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, not walking according to my own way, but according to the will and way of God. It's a desire in our heart that we want to be like Jesus. I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. I want to be more like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. I want to be more holy in my heart. It's a desire that drives us to obey. And when we are confronted with elements of our life that's not like Christ, now we must rearrange those things in us that are not like Christ. Why? So we can be conformed to the image of Christ. If we have a desire to be like him, the Spirit is going to convict us of those things in us that are not like him. And we're left with a choice to obey or stay the same. To look in the mirror and see the dirt on my face and wash it off or look in the mirror and see the dirt and keep on going. That's what the mirror of God's word is about. is to show us those things that are not like Christ so that he brings it to our attention as we look in the mirror of the word so the spirit will point it out and we get cleaned up. Why? So that we become a, a wonderful reflection of his nature, a wonderful reflection of his glory, that out of our personality, the power of God, the glory of God is seen when we're living obedient lives and we seek to imitate him. We, we become more loving like him. We become more giving like him. That's why it's important to study the scripture so that we can learn the ways of Christ to become more and more like him. 
disciples make disciples. Those who are parents and grandparents, those who have been teachers, those who work with young people, you know that, that they watch you. They pay attention to your actions. And, and they take on your character, they take on your nature, their, your persona, they, they take it on. They, they begin to talk like you. In fact, when the child starts to speak those first words, you get overjoyed, right? About those first words, those moments, the first steps. And that's the same spirit that God wants us to have as we work with other believers in the church. When people are young in the faith, we take joy in their first steps. We should take joy in the first words of faith that they're saying. Now, the little baby stumbled too long. Now, unfortunately, in the church, we condemn people when they stumble. Instead of, like a good parent, oh, it's okay, get back on the stride again. Or encouraging them to do it again. And again, until they're able to walk. That's what discipleship is. Discipleship is encouraging that which you know is good. And that which you see is part of the maturation process. We don't put the emphasis on those stones. We keep encouraging the walking and the talking. So they are built up in the faith and confident that I am a child of God and I'm accepted by the family of God. That I'm embraced by the arms of other believers. Not condemned, but comforted. Loved and cared for. That's part of discipleship. That's part of discipleship. And no matter how young or how old you are, you still can be a disciple maker through encouraging others through prayer. Um, you've been, you've prayed many prayers in your 40 years, 50 years, 60, 70, 80 years, 90 years. You can disciple others in prayer. Call them up, you make it, not get with them, but call them up on the phone and pray with them. Or encourage them to keep the faith. There are things that we can all do to help Build the body of Christ. Listen to the Spirit's call. Because he's called you, he still has you walking and talking and able to use what he's placed in you to pass it on and share it with someone else. That's part of making disciples. The verse says this also, of all nations. So we see this declaration. Christ reminds his believers that all authority has been given. That's for us to remember that we, we, we move forward not on our own power, but under the authority of God. For what purpose? The directive is to make disciples. To make disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. And he's given us a wide domain. He says of all nations. All means all. It's inclusive. Every person on the globe, in the world, Christ wants to use us to make disciples. Wherever I'm, I'm just here in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, I know it. But man, God uses and brings people in our sphere. And especially over the internet these days. You can be in conversation with someone in Africa or South America, Europe, Asia, wherever. You can be in conversation with them. That's an opportunity even to share the gospel. An opportunity to help share words of faith, to pray and encourage them in the faith. To make disciples of all nations. It is the idea that what God has given me it's not for me to hoard or hold on to it, but to share it with all. With all. I'm not to put any barriers on the gospel. No barriers of race. None of those barriers. In fact, I believe that that's part of the devil's design to keep us from being effective 
gospel barriers because of the sin of racism that so scarred America. It's caused all these factions and, and separation so that the gospel is watered down because of this idea of race. But God wants us to recognize that all flesh is eligible to receive the gospel and to be discipled. That we are not to put a wall up or a hand up and push someone back would have open arms ready to share with whosoever comes in our pathway whosoever comes across the threshold of this church, that our arms should be open, not pushing away. So that people experience the love of God's disciples, the love of God flowing from heaven to you and through you to others, all nations, all flesh. The word nations deals with it's the root of that word is called ethnos, all ethnicities, all ethnicities, all, all, all. And God's desire as we learn more of him and become disciples of Jesus Christ, that, that we recognize that what God has led us in our walk with him, we are to share with others, to teach people how to pray, teach people how to forgive, to teach people how to love, to teach people how to forgive themselves, to receive forgiveness, to teach people how to uh, handle all the trials and troubles of this world. That disciple making is part of the process of where Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. That's a tall order, isn't it? It's an it's a order of, of recognizing that my life in Christ is to be used as a pointer, to point someone on the right way, point someone on the right pathway, to lead them and to guide them. Paul wasn't perfect, but he was perfectly surrendered to Christ. No one is perfect. No, not one. But what he wants from us is perfect surrender to his voice, to his will, to his way, so that we can lead others in the pathway of growing to maturity in Christ. Making disciples. It's not an option. It's a command. It's a command. It's an expectation that God gives for the church. He wants us to be engaged in making disciples. By the Holy Spirit, we share the gospel and people receive the gospel message and they are delivered. They're set free from the sins. They're set free from the condemnation of sin and bought into the family of Christ. That's step one for all of us. Conversion. But we don't stop there. We're developed in the faith. We're built in the faith. We, we follow other believers. We're taught God's word and we emulate, we imitate, we, 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 we understand that my walk with Christ is connected with the body of Christ and I have big, big mamas and big brothers and big sisters and uncles in the faith who are there to help me grow in the body. And as God brings us to a place of maturity, he causes you to become one who goes out and shares the message with others. You're deployed, you're sent forward to share in your home, your community, your neighborhood, your workplace, wherever you may be, the Spirit of God inspires you to be a committed disciple, disciple-making disciple, so that people will see Christ in and through your life. Amen? Amen. Amen? Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, how you speak to us through your word. Help us, O oh God, 
become effective disciple makers, recognizing that by your Spirit's lead, that all of us have a specific calling to make disciples on the basis of how you've gifted us, how you called us. So thank you for our unique call. Thank you for our walk with you. Thank you, God, for your love and care for us. Thank you for allowing us to be co-laborers with you in this vineyard. Help us, God, to be faithful in every aspect of our life to understand that the relationships we have with other believers is used to help build them up in the faith. Let us not take those relationships lightly, but see them as sovereign appointments from God to help build the body of Christ, to impact lives from generations to come because of our actions today. Lord, I thank you and I praise your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We offer Christ to you, those who are online. If you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you are not a disciple of him, we offer Christ to you. On our website, you will be able to see a phone number you can call to get more information about becoming a believer in Jesus Christ. For that is step one in order to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Those who are here, I look around and I see our church family. Uh, I encourage you in our time, even now, as we reflect on the call that God has on our lives, that we will pray that God will use us to be effective in making disciples in our family, church family, friends. Let the Spirit of God lead us all in being effective disciples in Jesus Christ. As the choir will lead us now in our song of invitation, I really love the Lord. Amen. Amen.
be seated. Has everyone been served? The one that's in the elements. Let us bless the table. God, we thank you for this time as we come to communion in your holy presence. Thank you for welcoming us through Jesus Christ to commune with you. Father, we pray even now that you bless this bread that we will eat, a cup that we will drink from, a symbolize your body that was broken for us. Provide access into the family of God through forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that you open, provide this opportunity to communion with you forever. So even now, God, search our hearts. Is there anything that's not like you? We confess it before you now to cleanse our hearts so that we will not eat and drink unworthy. Lord, we thank you that we're always able to commune with you and fellowship because of the love that you've expressed through Jesus' life, death, burial, and resurrection and welcoming us to the table where there's peace, harmony, family, and joy forever. Bless a time of communion, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On that evening, Jesus took bread and he broke it. This is a body that is broken for you. Let us eat the bread together. Jesus took the cup, which symbolizes his blood that was shed for the repentance of our sins. Drink ye all of it together. Continue praying our prayers going up for um, our trustee, Ms. Gina, Gina Henry. Keep her lift up in your prayers of God. Continue to strengthen her. As prayers for uh, Mr. Jeffers, he's in the hospital at uh, UB Hyde. So as prayers for him, talk to him. Uh, he's moving to a room yesterday evening, so keep him in your prayers. Prayers for um, for the Wayne Shores. She's lifting him up in prayer. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Margot Coker, she's in rehab. And I talked to her uh, actually this 
this morning. She said she's, um, it's, it's a slow process, but she's making progress. So keep praying for her strength as God will strengthen her in that time of rehab as she recovers and is working her surgery. Prayer requests that you may have to share with the body of Christ. Yes, ma'am. I pray for all the elderly and the sick of the church. Amen. Other requests. Yes, ma'am. Prayer for my family. And I had asked you to lift up Diane um, Upshaw Williams in prayer. She came home from Europe with COVID, so she's mm -hmm. kind of having a hard recovery at home by herself. Mm -hmm. But she's just pray for her health strength. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Prayer for Juanita Hickson, who is a member of this community. She turned 96 years old. Please bless the day, God. Um, I ask you to continue prayers for my husband, Courtney Lewis, and also pray for my son, Keon Williams, because he's leaving Williamsby on his new journey. Amen. Amen. Pray for Mama, too. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Another other prayer request. Yes, ma'am. Appeal to our congregation many times. Prayer for Lee Sims, my friend, who lost her daughter. Yeah. And now she's dealing with the illness of her mother. And I ask your prayers for her. Amen. Amen. Other requests. If there are no other requests, let's look to God in prayer. Our sovereign Lord, we come before you with hearts of praise, thanksgiving in your holy presence. For God, you are so worthy of our praise, God. We thank you for how you've kept us, how you watch over us, how you provide for us, how you meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence that watches over us, gives us your peace, your comfort, your strength your joy. Thank you, God, for allowing us to gather together with believers today to worship in your sanctuary, this place that you've set apart for worship. We thank you for all the believers, the worshipers who are here today. Thank you for their lives, their families, that they represent. They come even now casting all of their cares Upon you, for we know, God, that you care for us. We listed several names, we shared our requests. God, you know even the requests that we did not share. And we ask, God, that you would move accordingly. Father, for those who are dealing with illness in their body, God, we look to you, O Jehovah Rapha, the God who is a healer, to touch their bodies in their place specifically of their need. God, you know every cell, every fiber of that body. God, we ask now that you would touch them and bring forth your healing power and strength. For those in recovery, God, we pray for your strength to pour it out in the days of recovery ahead, that you would help them in healing their body and giving them the physical strength to do what's necessary to get back to a place of mobility movement according to what you have blessed them with. God, we pray for families. Pray for traveling mercies, Father, for those who are out of town and those who will be leaving and moving. God, we just pray that your angels will go before and with, providing the way, God, of safe passage and meet all of the needs that they stand in need of. Oh, God, as they move forward, God, according to your will and purposes. Father, we lift up specifically even now the Sparks family and their loss. And for those in this congregation who know and love Sister Starks, we pray, Father, for your peace to comfort each heart, uh, to give comfort, oh God, knowing that your daughter is now with you in the fullness of joy in your presence. Thank you, God, for welcoming her and bringing her to be in your glorious presence. 
God, we pray for our family, uh, that they would be comforted in knowing that uh, your daughter is with you in glory. We pray, Father, that you'll continue to strengthen each hurting heart, give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. But God, we, we know that we didn't come here to stay. But God, we, we will one day be uh, in the fullness of your presence. We don't know the time or the hour. But God, as we walk in faith, uh, walking as disciples before you, God, we live with the eager expectation of seeing you fully, to know you fully, as we have been known fully by you. So God, let us live with the, uh, the hope and the assurance that every day is a gift from God and we live it accordingly. And God, when we leave this earthly realm, that we would enter into glory and experience the ultimate gift and glorification in your presence. So God, we in this moment now, praise you, we glorify you, and we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now we'll have our recognition of friends and visitors, announcements by my wife and Sydney Good morning. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And it has been a blessed day. And it looks like we are all family here, but I hope you all have felt welcomed and have felt the presence of the Lord today. Because truly it's been a wonderful, wonderful service. All right. And now for our announcements. We do have offering plates in the foyer. They are located in the rear of the sanctuary of the church. If you wish to make an offering or a donation, you may also find us on Facebook. So for those who are online with us, you have the opportunity to share and give it with us. And we appreciate all your giving, all your tithes and offerings. There will be an in-person service uh, on June 18th. That is our next opportunity for in-person service. Uh, we hope that you all can join us. On next Sunday, we will be on our conference call for our Sunday school and our worship service. Enclosed, you will find in your program the graduate and retiree info form. The plan is to have the program on June 18th, our next worship service in person. We're going to have the graduate retiree uh, scholarship Sunday. And that will be Father's Day. So please get your form in to Elder Eva Carter if you haven't already done so. Okay? Westminster will host a food giveaway every first Friday of each month until December from 2 to 4 p.m. The next food giveaway will be this Friday or July. First Friday in uh, July, July 7th, 2023, from 2 to 4. We also have a, with a thankful heart, a card that was received. It says, greetings, Reverend Bell. Thanks a million for allowing me to play music at your wonderful church. Please tell your church hello. Love and blessings, Carl L. Winters, who was the kalimba player that we had. So this is his thank you card to us. Okay, I believe that's all of our announcements. We do want to say happy birthday to all June celebrants. If you are in service, just wave your hand. Any June celebrants? Okay, let us, let us sing for our June celebrants. Uh, all June happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
praise God for another wonderful day that he has blessed us to come and worship. Thank God for your presence and all we're here. Let's stand to receive our closing hymn and benediction. Let's be the tithe.